Hello everyone and welcome back to the Biblical Bookworm. My name is Elizabeth and today I'll be talking about the book How to Be Happy, How to Be Holy by Father Paul O'Sullivan. The book was published in 1943 by Father Paul O'Sullivan, who was an Irish Dominican priest. And in this book, he explains how to pray, how to derive benefit from prayer, and how to actually enjoy the act of praying and derive consolation from praying. After that, he talks about the most important prayers of the Catholic faith. For example, the Hail Mary, the Our Father, the Creed, the Confitior. And a big part of the book is also dedicated to the Rosary. And with each of this, those prayers, he explains how to derive the most benefit from them. He explains their meaning and maybe what to meditate on when praying them. And for each of the 15 mysteries of the Rosary, he has an own dedicated chapter to them where he gives you some thoughts on what to meditate on or what to pray for during those mysteries. The first thing he explains is what good prayer is. And apparently good prayer consists of three parts. First, you have to have faith and confidence that your prayers are actually heard and that they will be answered. Second is that you have to persevere in praying. It's not enough to just say a prayer once and then be disappointed if it doesn't get answered. And the third thing is humility, because God doesn't hear the proud. And that's also the reason why sometimes prayers just don't get um, answered. So you need those three conditions for your prayer to be effective. And I will talk about that topic in more detail in another video. Another thing Father Paul O'Sullivan mentions is um, the importance of Mass, because, for example, God told St. MacTilde that he would send as many saints to one's death as Masses attended during their lifetime. And now I would like to talk about the Rosary a bit more, because that's a crucial topic in the book. And the first thing I've learned, which I really didn't know before, was that the different parts of the Rosary represent different things. For example, the short part of the rosary is a symbol of our life on earth, and the long part of the rosary, which is this whole thing, is uh, eternity and our life in heaven. And now I will talk about each of the 15 mysteries and summarize uh, his thoughts on those mysteries. And if you're interested to listen to that in more detail, I have linked the audiobook in the description. It's available for free on YouTube, and the part about the rosary starts at 2 hours 17. Let's start with the first joyful mystery, which is the Annunciation. What we can learn here is humility from Mary, because while every other woman back then wanted to become the mother of the Messiah, she decided to stay a virgin to deprive herself of that possibility. And another thing that we have to bear in mind is that God did not become man to save humanity as such, but he came uh, on earth and became man and died for you in particular. And he would have done that if you were the only person on the planet too. The second mystery is the visitation, where we can learn charity from Mary and we can be consoled that if she was um, willing to help her cousin and do this whole journey while being pregnant, we can only imagine how eager she is to help us, her children, when we are in need. The third mystery is the nativity of Jesus. And here we can um, meditate on the fact that Jesus is born on the altar Every, at every Mass, at consecration, and he is also born in our hearts when we receive Holy Communion. The fourth joyful mystery is the presentation in the Temple, where we can uh, learn the importance of duty from Mary, because she didn't have to offer up her child, the Son of God, to God, because like he was already his child, but she did it anyways out of obedience. And the fifth joyful mystery is the founding of Jesus in the temple, which represents us uh, when we lose Jesus by committing a mortal sin and find him again in confession. And we have to imagine how much grief Joseph and Mary felt when they lost their child. And we have to ask ourselves whether we feel the same when we commit a mortal sin, because that would be ultimately the goal. And another thing is that if a person would see um, their soul in state of mortal sin, they would die of horror. 
Now let's talk about the Sorrowful Mysteries. And the Sorrowful Mysteries are arguably the most important of all mysteries because, as St. Alphonse says, every saint became saint because he made, meditated on the Sorrowful Mysteries. The first uh, mystery we have here is the agony of Jesus in the garden. And uh, Father Paulo Sullivan suggests praying this mystery before confession um, for God to grant us true sorrow over our sins. The second sorrowful mystery is the scourging at the pillar. And um, here we have to think about the suffering Jesus went through and also for which sins he went through this suffering. Because um, every type of pain Jesus suffered on the day of his crucifixion represents a certain type of sin we commit or is um, has been done because we commit certain sins. And in this case, the scourging um, stands for us indulging in our passions and all the sins we commit with our body, which are, for example, gluttony or adultery. And if you're interested to find out more about what pains represent what sins or what pains, uh, what sins costed what pain, I have linked a video of Father Mike Schmitz in the description where he talks about that topic. The third sorrowful mystery is the crowning with thorns. And here Jesus suffered for the sins we commit with our thoughts. The fourth sorrowful mystery was the way of the cross, where we can ask God to help us not to fall into sin or not to fall gravely or at least not to fall that often. And the last sorrowful mystery is the crucifixion, where we can also meditate on the pain Mary went through because we oftentimes overlook that. We only think about the pain Jesus suffered for us. But Mary, in fact, um, also suffered a big part because you can only imagine how hard it must have been for her to see her only child which is also the son the son of god to die in such a cruel way let's talk about the glorious mysteries now and the first glorious mystery is the resurrection where we can learn that god conquered death because he actually arised from the dead and here we can pray for god to help us to conquer sin to overcome sin or to um, help us with an illness or any affliction or problem we have. And this mystery is also crucial for our faith because there is an apologetic book, for example, uh, it's called A Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. And there the former atheist Lee Strobel tries to disprove that the resurrection was real but he comes to the conclusion that it actually happened. He figured that this would be the most important thing to disprove and he failed at that and now he is a Christian. I really recommend that book. I'll do a video about that uh, later. And I've also linked a movie about the book, which is really good in the description. It's available for free on YouTube. The second mystery is to remind us that even though we can't see God, even though we can't see Jesus, he is always with us and nothing happens without his consent and not even a hair falls from our head without him allowing that. The third glorious mystery is the coming of the Holy Ghost, where we can pray for trust in God. As we've said before, that's a crucial thing for prayer to be effective. And the fourth glorious mystery is the Assumption of Mary, where we can pray to her for a happy death. And in the fifth glorious mystery, the coronation, we can admire Mary and everything she has done for us. The last fact I've learned in this book is that one moment in heaven would recompense for all the suffering on earth. So maybe if you're struggling right, right now, if you are not happy, just remind yourself of this fact. Now let's get to my opinion on the book. I would give this book an 8 out of 10. I really like the description of the mysteries. It was really helpful for me. Maybe if you have already read a couple of books about the rosary, it won't be that helpful for you. And the reason why it's 8 out of 10 and not 9 out of 10 or something higher is that I was a little bit disappointed that the book didn't really talk about how to be happy. Maybe I expected the wrong thing, but I expected to actually read the book and then know how to be happy all the time. And unfortunately, the book is more about prayer and how to be holy than how to be happy. That's been it for today. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, share, comment, and see you next week. God bless. Bye.